everyone, welcome to Pure Fishing TV. My name is Adam Reuter, and for the next few moments, we're gonna be talking about two of my favorite Berkeley Gold Plastics, the five inch jerk shad and the seven inch jerk shad. Now, the jerk shad probably was born originally as an American bass fishing lure, but it has absolutely made its ground here, not only in Australia, but around the world as a saltwater bait. Uh, I suppose that's the reason it does come in a 7 inch, although knowing largemouth bass, they'd still eat the old 7 inch. As would uh, a large Murray cod or several other freshwater species we have here in Australia. But where it's really uh, made its inroads in Australia and New Zealand is with the fish like snapper. Uh, especially snapper, they just seem to crawl all over these guys. And, and a lot of the fishing that we do right around the country for, uh, for red snapper is done with, with the jerk shad. But it's also good for you know, a host of, of other fish species, from big flathead in an estuary system, to a dewy on a break wall, to a tuna you know, in the uh, inshore area, and also well offshore. You can pop this big seven inch guy down on you know, three, four, five ounces of lead and, and catch all sorts of weird and wonderful oogly googs at 100 odd metres. So they, they really do uh, work in a whole host of different environments. They are pretty much the perfect saltwater uh, soft bait. So let's have a look at some rigging. I'll run you through some retrieves and let's jump right into it. Okay, so here we have uh, the five inch and the seven inch jerk shads. Um, now, obviously, there's a, a relative uh, size difference, but it's more so in the body profile. Um, you know, the, the, their tail diameters are still very skinny at the back. It's, it's more about the overall thickness uh, of, of width and also the depth of the bait. Now, um, because we are, uh, you know, creatures of habit, we, we will always, you know, pick a, a jig head to, uh, to attach to, to almost any soft plastic just because it's, it's the easiest form of getting your uh, soft bait out into the water and retrieving it. Um, obviously, if you needed to, uh, to, to do it um, unweighted, then you could use something like that. We'll get to those later. But for, for the jig heads, um, it, it's pretty straightforward. You, you just you know, choose your, your hook size. Now, obviously, you can, on this five inch, we could put um, both this 2.0 and this 3.0, it wouldn't really matter which one of those two. Actually, you could also use that, uh, that size 2 there. But um, keeping that aside for a second, you can use either one of these two on this little 5 inch here, and it's not really going to make that much of a difference. What we've got here is more so is the gauge of the steel. This is the really important part. It's the gauge of the steel that, uh, that, that determines you know, how you're going to fish this guy. If you're looking for, for knockout, hold on, you know, drag locked, heavy leaders, big lines, getting the fish away from structure and out of a snag and everything's got to be tight and ready to go. Well, obviously you're going to need this kind of steel. You know, it's very thick, heavy steel, um, regardless of how big the weight is, because this guy, you know, this is what, this is uh, an ounce. I mean, obviously this guy comes, you know, right down there, a quarter ounce or even lower, one eighth of an ounce. So we're talking more so about the, the, the hook gauge. You've got to be careful when you're buying your jig heads, how heavy the steel is. Um, because both of these jig heads, as I say, will go into uh, into this five inch. And this is obviously very, very skinny steel. You can see I can bend it with my hands here. Um, where you'd use this guy as opposed to this one is this might be for, you know, you might be uh, doing some estuary fishing and you're looking to catch a, a big flatty on this five inch jerk shad, which is a perfect, absolutely spot on um, size and type of soft bait for a flatty. You really can't go wrong. And, and if you measure it up, the hook's going to come out nicely in that centre third there. So that's about the right sort of um, dimensions to, to, to fish whatever this is, a, a 1 8 2 0 in the light wire. So this is what we do to, um, to fish this guy for our, for our estuary, uh, estuary fishing or for a big flatty or something. And just uh, and slide it up like that and you're good to go. That is ready, steady spaghetti. Chuck that in the water, hop, 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 and Mr. Flathead comes along and, and swallows him down. Also, you, you might catch a dewy on this guy as well, but if you are fishing for deweys, you might want to reconsider um, the hook gauge, because those guys tend to pull a bit harder than a flathead, and, uh, and, and they, they know where their home is, and they can tow you into rock walls and uh, you know around some uh, oyster leases and, and, and uh, sort of mooring ropes and stuff, so you know, minus obviously the weight, but looking for the gauge of the steel, obviously if you're fishing this gauge of steel, you're using heavier rods, you're using heavier lines, uh, and, and I mean really to push that steel, that gauge of steel, and you need plenty of drag setting to, out, to actually force that hook to go in past the barb. But as I said, this, uh, this hook, although it's only one size larger, will still go on to 
that five inch jerk shad. You know, a little bit wobbly in the guts there because I've given it a couple of riggings, but it, it, nonetheless, you could fish that quite successfully. It's nice and straight uh, and it'll do the job. Obviously, uh, using the stealth head um, with the, the little bit of uh, lead across the chins to give it a bit, a bit, a bit better balancing in the water when it's swimming. But um, yeah, you could realistically get away with fishing either of those two. And when I'm fishing a seven inch, I, I tend to use, uh, I have used three O's in the seven inch, but I, I, my, my favorite is a, is a five O. Um, you know, plenty of people don't go for the five O in the seven inch. They stick with the three O, that's fine. Don't have a problem with that. Um, you're looking at about the same sort of steel gauge, maybe a little bit heavier, um, but what you've got is, uh, is more hook running down the back. So you get a better bite radius as well, because there's a little bit more gape here as well. Now obviously if we wanted to do this properly, I would mark the out point with the jig head here. So we're going to there, we're putting a nick in the back of it there, so we've got an idea of where to come out. Now keep in mind that these guys have these, these uh, belly slits here, um, so you can't go really deep. You've got to run it along the shallow or shallow rigged as, uh, as I call it. Just keeping the, uh, the hook point up in the back section and out that marked point that we made, slide it up and that is the quickest and the easiest way to, uh, to, to rig. And that's nice and straight, you can see there, that's, that's ready to go into the water and, and start catching them. Uh, and, and realistically, you could throw that, that this size of soft bait and that gauge of hook, that is for creature fishing, you know, that's, that's knock them down, hold on until you're, uh, you're red in the face material. So very good, very easy to rig, standard style of rigging on a jig head. All right, let's say you're out there snapper fishing, you're, uh, I don't know, you're off Sydney or out of Brisbane River or wherever you are, and you've been snapper fishing all morning and you've got your favorite snapper bait here, a five inch pink shine jerk shad in the gulp formula, and, uh, and you're happy as Larry, you're coming on him home, uh, and you happen to see a, a school of, I don't know, say Mac tuners or, or frigate mackerel or, or stripy tuna, you know, little tuna things, and you think to yourself, yeah, I wanna go and have a crack at some of those, they look, they look like the goat. So you just get your old snapper rod out and you start casting this thing around like it's Christmas time. And all you're getting is follows. They're following it up and they're chasing it around, but they're not eating it. Something wrong there. Probably the size more than likely. So you get your scissors out, you give it a hack there. There goes the front two and a half inches. You're left with two and a half inches on the back. You downsize the hook. You keep the same sort of weight a quarter of an ounce because that'll get you a bit of distance. And you just feed this sucker straight in the back there like that. Poke it out, slide it up give it a little bit of a tear because we went a bit far, but that is how you're going to change your day. That will catch you the tuna that you wouldn't have caught otherwise. Just slice the front off it, happy days.